We are Aaron and Kiara, and for the last few weeks, we've been traveling around Southeast Asia. While we were in Thailand, we thought it would be great to visit Vietnam, but we want to try something different. So that's why we're going to go from Bangkok to Ho Chi Minh by land, passing through Cambodia. The first step in this trip is to jump on a bus to go from Bangkok to Siem Reap. It is always nice to come back to Bangkok. We have been so many times now that we have our favorite restaurants, our favorite hotel, our favorite food. So it's always nice to come back here for a few days. Well, this home for the next 10 hours. Yep, 10 towns. We leave at 8, we get there about 4 or 5. Um, with a rest stop and a lunch break in between. I can't believe it, we are living a perfect timing. In this bus, they give you a goodie bag that has some mystery treats. Refreshing towel, blueberry something, another blueberry something, and two mints. I don't got blueberry, I got, I don't know, eurocake. <gasps> what is a eurocake? It's a puff cake filled with sweet custard cream. <coughs> very sweet, very good. The blueberry one is not as sweet, very oh, yummy. With this bus ticket comes a meal. We both got some egg pad thai. We stop at a random roadhouse about two hours in, hand our ticket over to a nice little lady, and she hands us a meal back. It is 9:30 in the morning, <laughs> but at lunchtime we'll be crossing the border, so I guess we are going to eat pad thai now. Thank you. Our last pad thai in Thailand for a while. Cambodia. This is the second time we've crossed this border with this company, so we know exactly what to expect. Pretty much, we get stamped out of Thailand, and then we give we hand over our passports to the company. Then we walk straight over the border, and then we wait, and then they hand, finally hand us our passports back. Visa application's already done, and we jump back on the bus. It only costs ten dollars extra more to do this sort of treatment than it would to do it yourself. We are back in Siem Reap with our favourite taxi driver. Talk to the driver. The bus dropped us off and we were waiting for about 15 minutes because our driver was waiting for us in the wrong spot. And we were just about to leave, we were getting really grumpy. I was looking at my watch, had our bags on and everything, we were striding down the road. We saw this figure riding towards us on a scooter and waving like, stop, wait! And it was him. So he picked us up, we went to get some cash, changed some money over, and then we got dropped at our hotel. And so far, it looks great. For those who are new to our channel or a YouTube the driver that we had last year when we were in Cambodia. Are you also? You and he took us all uh, around Angkor Wat. He took us to the circles. He basically took us around the Siam Reap for four days. And we kept in touch for the past um, year. And we are so happy to meet him again. I swear Cambodian people must be the happiest people in Southeast Asia. Everyone has a smile like this. I'm so happy to be back here. And this is where we're staying. This is the Villa Wat Dem Mac. And it's very hard for me to pronounce. But this is our room. We've got a bed. And not much else. <laughs> this is also called the Golden Banana Superior Room, which I find very funny. Fringe. Desk. And the bathroom. Bathroom. Balcony. Overlooking the pool. It's bloody nice. Now we're having a coffee. Fun fact. We got invited to a youth neighbor's wedding party tonight. Fortunately, just the other day we bought a couple of elegant clothes because we don't have much in our bags. Uh, it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to see a Cambodian wedding party. Hopefully the three words that we know in Khmer will be enough. Also, how often is it that you get invited to a social event in a foreign country. This is really cool. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. So we're going to go there. Hopefully it's going to be fun. And yeah, let's go have a blast. I can't believe we're going to a wedding party in Cambodia. I'm so happy we came to Siam Reap. It's so cool. Well, the steepest staircase in the world. <laughs> had an 
amazing night. Everyone was so welcoming. We were accepted straight away as part of the community, as part of the family. We didn't want for food, for drink, for anything. Everything was provided. Everything was pretty much forced onto us. If you didn't have a drink in your hand, one was just magically appeared. Uh, we met so many new people. We danced a lot, which is unusual for me. Yeah, it was just a magical night. I am blown away by the hospitality and the kindness of the Cambodian people and the people that we met at a wedding party last night. It was fantastic. It's the most fun we have had in years. We met Rayus last year because it was the annoying Tuk Tuk driver that convinced us to book all the tours with him the first day we made it to Siam Reap and now he is He's a friend and his family. We really felt part of the family yesterday. The community that the people of Cambodia have is exceptional. In the Western world, we always want to make more money and we don't even know the name of our neighbors. But here, they, they have a beautiful community. It's fantastic. Now we need to go out from this room because the cleaner is coming. Now, mission for today is massage, lunch and shopping, because it's our last day in Siam Reap. Back in the famous pub street. Right now, I'm just, I'm still riding the high from last night, so <laughs> floating on a cloud, so to speak. Hello. Uh, 30 minutes. 30 minutes? Okay, so we didn't film this part because we were too busy falling into a completely relaxed state. But after the massage, it was time for lunch, and I found a uniquely Australian word on the menu. The massage was very, very good. Very relaxing, very floaty. Only cost 10 US, which is 15 Australian. But now we are at a place called the Muffin Man. The Muffin Man? The Muffin Man! Because last night we met some people at the party that worked here, so we came here for lunch to one, get some lunch, and two to visit. That looks really good. The mushrooms. Pumpkin. Avocado. Rocket. Yeah, it was good. Oh, yeah, maybe I can't remember. I have a bacon and egg roll. That looks great too. That looks great. Just because I have an egg on my face doesn't mean you have to take the video. There is one more really important reason we came back to Siam Reap, and that is to see the circus. This is the second time we've been to visit this circus. We went last year, and both these times it was absolutely amazing. It's one of the best live performances I've ever seen and it helps support the local community by providing jobs and skills to the people. It's something I fully recommend coming to see if you ever visit Cambodia. They've even upgraded the tent and added aircon. next morning we're in the process of packing our bags and we've got a bus to catch for the next leg of our journey. This never happens and Haron is awake in the morning and I'm sleepy. I'm sleepy. I'm not really connecting this morning yet and we have a bus just to catch in 50 minutes. We were just about to leave and we couldn't find our passport. That woke me up. Eventually they were in a pocket of my bag. I think uh, the cleaner put them there to keep them safe because I would never put them there. Uh, that was stressful. <laughs> I saw all, all our holiday <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> anyway, now we are very late. Oh, okay. Well, we made it on the bus. Luckily, it was a bit of a frantic scrabble to get a driver and um, luckily they had one right outside the hotel. But we made it. That was close. We made it with like 10 minutes to spare. The chairs look very comfortable though. The bus stopped at somewhere, at a coastal restaurant, and there were snacks for sale by some locals. So we got some sweet potato chips, some peanuts, and I don't know what they're called, straws, edible straws. And we got my favorite chips ever. I was buying the chips in Indonesia uh, years ago and then I found them last year in Laos and now I found them again here for the first time in Cambodia. I'm so happy. You know guys, I love food. Yesterday I used when he came to 
because uh, he gives us a ton of mango from the, his mango tree in front of his house. He's so sweet, it's fantastic. My best mango I've had. This is home for tonight, and that is the view. <laughs> We were already in Phnom Penh last year, so the reason we're here today, not to visit the city itself, but because we found out that there's a boat to catch to go to Vietnam. In this trip, we've flown to places, we've ridden a bus to places, but we haven't ridden on a boat to places, so it's something a bit new. We're gonna do that, but it doesn't leave until tomorrow. So we've got tonight in the city. Last year we took a slow boat from Thailand to Laos that went along the Mekong, and we loved it so much that when we found out that there was a boat that was going from Cambodia to Vietnam along the Mekong again, we thought that we must say that we needed to go on the Mekong again. While we're here in the city, we decided to go visit the central market to see if we can pick up a bargain. This is a central market in Phnom Penh and you can buy everything from dresses, shoes, you can get your hair done, you can buy watches, you can find literally everything. It took me a while, but I finally got used to crossing the road here. It's one of the places in the world where you just sort of have to spot a, a small gap and then walk out in front of oncoming traffic and hope they see you and stop. I just follow you. So all we picked up at the central market, even though we could have probably built a motor car with everything there, we got two coconut waters and they were uh, 5,000 real each. The thing with Cambodia is that all the market vendors and the tuk-tuk drivers and the shop owners and the restaurant owners are all very pushy. It's nothing like Thailand. It's way worse than Thailand. But everyone is so nice. It breaks my heart every time to, see, to say, no, sorry, I'm walking. I don't really need a tuk-tuk. No, sorry, I'm full. I just had lunch. I can't really eat anything else. This is the Mekong in which we're going to navigate tomorrow. It is not one of the most beautiful rivers in the world, but certainly is one of the most fascinating rivers in the world. It is so beautiful. You will see tomorrow. I hope the journey will be as beautiful as the one we did in Laos. What was I home? Kind of. We were about to go out for dinner at about, I don't know, seven tonight. That was the plan. Then Kiara's mum decided to call her about six and then three hours later it was nine o'clock so we didn't actually end up going out for dinner we just got a grab instead but the grab looks good so this is dinner uh, I got a shawarma and Kiara got a falafel shawarma that is actually not a shawarma, it's a plate with falafel and hummus and some pita bread. So you build your own sandwich? It is actually very good. But tonight is going to be our last dinner in Cambodia, so I'm looking forward to trying Vietnamese food tomorrow. The next day. Ready? Yep, bags packed, off we go. I don't know if there's food on the boat, so we stopped at 7 Eleven and got some trusty toasted cheese sandwiches. The famous toasted cheese sandwiches from 7 Eleven. They're always good, they're never bad. They're probably not very good for you, but they're tasty. The best thing about this boat is that we've chosen the front seats and that's far away from the engines because I'll never forget the nine hours we spent sitting right next to a diesel engine on a Laos slow boat. This is a lot different from a Laos slow boat. It's still nice to cruise down the Mekong Long and it's a different way to cross a border. We got off at the Cambodian border to stamp out of the country and handed over our passports again to the company guide. But don't worry, they're very safe and trustworthy. We cruised a short distance to the Vietnam border and we waited while the guide did the entry for us. He gave us back our passports, we jumped back on the boat and we travelled to our final destination of Chow Dock. We made it. So the plan was, when the bus dropped us off at the jetty, we would just walk up the street and magically find a taxi or a tuk-tuk or someone that would give us a lift. Apparently Vietnam is not like Thailand or Cambodia. Or Philippines or, Philippines. or everywhere else. we didn't actually find a taxi, which is very surprising. So we had to walk. It was about a kilometre. It took us, what, maybe 10 minutes. 
Maybe it was half an hour. It wasn't that long. It was half an hour. Anyway, so we got here, we're super sweaty, it's dark outside, but we paid for a room. Now we're gonna freshen up, go find some dinner. By the way, this is the room. A bit, but it's quite hard. Um, bathroom with the shower between the toilet and the sink. And that was $26 Australian dollars per night. Ah, that's bright. And we're going to stay here only one night because tomorrow we have a bus for Ho Chi Minh. I look horrible. I'm so sweaty. That was quick. Usually it delays. I actually never tried Vietnam food, Vietnamese food before, so that is going to be interesting. I think. <laughs> we found a vegan place and they don't speak a word of English. I don't speak any Vietnamese. So through sign language, Google Translate and uh, some friendly smiling, we figured out we got some spring rolls to eat. And a hookah. Very good. We thought we probably should eat with the sticks and so far. The stick chopsticks. Chopsticks. So far, it's complicated. It is safe to say that Vietnam beds are not very comfortable. They are a bit hard. I don't, I don't mind it. It is hard, it is firm, but it's better than sleeping on the floor. And now we've got to try and get a SIM card so we can make our way around cities and towns more comfortably. And use Google Translate. And use Google Translate. This is chow dog during the day, and as you can see, there is not much to do. That's why we have booked a bus to go to Ho Chi Minh in one hour. So we are running, trying to do, get the SIM card done on time. Right now, we're all packed up, and we've got a bus to catch to Ho Chi Minh City. Luckily, the receptionist was nice enough to organise it for us so the bus will just stop directly in front of the hotel and we don't have to do anything else. We don't have to get a taxi, we don't have to walk anywhere, it'll just be there for us. So there's the bus and it's very interesting. <laughs> it's a sleeper bus and we have never been in one of these before. There is even a TV, cup holder, space for my shoes. Like, you can stretch my legs. This is fun. It's like having a spa day. Some ladies came in the bus to sell these slimy looking things. I have no idea what they are, but they taste like a sweet crepe with sesame seeds. If someone knows what they are, please let me know because I really have no idea. They are they're not savory. They're a bit sweet, but not uh, not very sweet. They're actually quite good. Very uh, interesting consistency. <laughs> we survived the bus trip. It wasn't that bad, um, but a trip that was supposed to be four hours actually was eight hours. And eight hours is a long time just to lay down and do nothing. So after about three hours, I really wanted to stand up and stretch, but the, the aisles were about this big. That's not a joke, they're about this big. Mm -hmm. So to stand up and stretch, I might have been stepping on someone, I don't know. It was, I wasn't game to do it anyway. But it wasn't bad, it, was, it wasn't a bad experience just to lay there, sort of look out the window, watch the world roll past, have a bit of a nap when I wanted to. It's nice and comfortable. The aircon was a nice temperature, it wasn't too hot, wasn't too cold. There was a blanket if you were cold. They stopped for food, they stopped for a rest break. Um, but we made it. This is a not very clean apartment. We found some hair in the bathroom floor. Kitchen, bathroom, iron getting changed. And that is it. We made it from Bangkok to Ho Chi Minh by the end. We will see you guys in the next video. But don't forget to like and subscribe.